This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Welcome back to Research Talks from Stockbox. Alan Green is here joining us. How are you doing, Alan, on this uh, fine, brisk autumn day? Lovely colours outside. It's Yeah, it, it might be fine and brisk with you. It's a little overcast here, Mark, but we had a fantastic day yesterday and uh, and uh, the, the weather forecast is pretty benign for the weekend, so I think we're going to get get more of the same. Uh, maybe okay. a bit of rain here and there. But uh, but yeah, it's um, it, it's been a very quiet week, really, hasn't it? It's, uh, mm. you know, I think uh, I think everyone's sitting on their hands until we get this budget out of the way and of course we've got that that uh, the elephant in the room which is of course the US election will it be uh, Kamala or will it be Trump and uh, exactly that, well we'll know in two weeks won't we so we've got two weeks of sort of more uncertainty I think then we can perhaps start moving on from uh, yeah the uncertain environment and see indeed what the, the market brings I mean gold of course continues to hit all-time highs there um, mm -hmm. and for example Caracal gold I believe they're going to be Coming out of suspension very soon. Um, they've had a bit of a tough time. They've been interviewed coming out with Robbie at some point. Um, but I mean, you know, if they've managed to get through these last 20 months uh, and the gold price is now rewarding them, then fantastic, you know. So there's got to be some silver linings to, uh, yeah, to, 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 to the downside. So, um, yeah, that's nice to see gold doing very well. Um, and yeah, get these two weeks out of the way. Let's see how um, how the markets respond as we get through this, uh, this uncertain period um, and the run up to, to Christmas. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing what the rest of the year brings. And of course, uh, there's quite a few th catalyst events I think going to happen, particularly with Metals One, who we're going to talk about today, uh, who of course are on track to complete that scoping study before Christmas, ready in time, of course, for the EU uh, critical minerals pitch in January. So anyway, you can start with Metals One, and then we're going to cover a couple of other companies. We're going to cover Beaks. Uh, FinCloud, FinCloud Group, yes, is that right? Beaks, FinCloud, and facilities yep, by Beaks ADF. Financial. Yeah, Beaks, yep, that's Beaks it, Financial. That's uh, so Met One first, Alan, over to you. Okay, so so Metals One market, as you rightly say, the the, the company's been uh, set up to address the um, the critical minerals shortfall um, that's been made very clear uh, by the EU, and the EU, of course, are uh, fast tracking uh, or will be fast tracking specific projects in that regard um that's certainly something that uh, caught the attention of U uh, european green transition who of course i interviewed early this week and um and the team are working there with the olsen rare earth project in sweden um but of course metals one are focused on uh, finland and also norway uh, the primary project, of course, in, in Finland is the Black Schist project, uh, and uh, the uh, the operatorship and ownership is initially 100%. And, of course, Black Schist is adjacent to the Talvivara mine, which is Europe's largest operating nickel mine. Um, and when the uh, when the mineral resource estimate for, for the uh, for Black Schist was initially undertaken, there was an estimated mineral resource estimate of 28.1 million tonnes of Talvivara style deposits which equated to um just under 54,000 tons of nickel 28,000 tons of copper three and a half thousand tons of cobalt and 180,000 tons of zinc um and uh these this this asset of course has um over the past year or so been developed and um uh, it's been drilled and i'm, I'm going to take you through each of each, each of those developments so certainly the, the recent developments uh, um, over the past year which are which have really in my opinion accelerated this project now to the the next level the other asset um the company uh has is a stake uh, an 80 percent stake in the brownfield rana project and this is the rana project in norway this is very similar in geological structure to the voise bay uh, asset in newfoundland in canada it's a nickel copper uh, nickel copper and pgm deposit with potential for massive sulfides nickel uh, uh, copper and cobalt in the land circling uh, what is a former operating mine called the Bruvam 
mine. Now, um, the operator there, King Rose, um, is the uh, 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 is the operator. Um, uh, in effect, um, Met One are the investor in this asset, and um, King Rose have um, an opportunity to earn up to seventy five percent over eight years through spending uh, fifteen uh, million dollars. And as we'll hear shortly, they 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 have uh, now addressed the second phase or, or, or achieved the second phase in that. Uh, uh, development process. So um, on to this year. Um, uh, back in April this year, Chairman Alistair Clayton uh, bought uh, half a million shares in the open market at just over a penny, um, and uh, and of course the the sh shares are trading at 0 0.40p. Um, so uh, they're, they're now trading well below that to that point at which uh, uh, Alistair Clayton bought shares. Jonathan Owen. The chief executive, that who of course you've interviewed on uh, many occasions, Mark, also bought half just over half a million shares at one and a half p, um, and uh, and also uh, a, a further block of shares at one point four p. Um, so so that was back in April. Um, in May, of course, the company announced um, uh, that uh, they were working on uh, the up updating the Black Schist Mineral Resource Estimate, um, which would which uh, will then underpin the PA that we spoke about right at the start. Um, and indeed, um, in July this year, we had that uh, final uh, resource um, uh, estimate through, um, where the company upgraded the mineral so mineral resource estimate. For uh, uh, from twenty eight point one million tons to twenty nine million tons, um, um, and uh, and and uh, the the total black schist project reserves now uh, have been nearly doubled uh, to fifty seven point one million tons. In fact, more than doubled from from the previous estimate. And again, uh, on the back of that news, uh, Jonathan Owen, chief executive, and his uh, and his wife also purchased more shares uh, in the company. So um, the company's got the upgraded mineral resource estimate. It then announced in October, in, in August rather, that it would uh, announce the, uh, or it had awarded the uh, contract to complete the preliminary economic assessment, the PEA, to Ward L. Armstrong. And uh, this is, of course, a, a long established uh, British uh, engineering and uh, um, um, mining. Uh, uh, exp uh, expertise company um, and uh, this uh, PA will be completed in November. Wardell of course have also worked on uh, 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 PAs for other companies including of course Cadence Minerals and the uh, Amapa Iron Ore project in Brazil and many other uh, many other uh, 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 um, uh, projects uh, uh, over, over the years. So what Wardell will be doing is establishing um, uh, with the asset uh, mining and processing schemes, in other words, how to get the stuff out of the ground, uh, providing a, a detailed technical report and the technical parameters, and of course, uh, you know, most significantly, how much all that's going to cost, and of course, the actual operating costs uh, ongoing uh, to uh, to uh, that that will be required uh, sort of by the, by the project. Um, now, at the same time, um, uh, I mentioned King Rose earlier, of course, the RANA a project in Norway. Uh, uh, the uh, Met One also updated on the RANA uh, drilling campaign. Uh, the drilling campaign uh, commenced. Um, at King Rose, the uh, owner operator, had engaged Arctic Drilling to complete work at Randbogen, which is one of the uh, prospects at the RANA project. Um, and that was completed in uh, September. Um, which meant that at, uh, King Rose had completed the second stage of the transaction, and on the back of that, they now own 50% of the Rana project through incurring a further three million uh, of extent, uh, expenditure. It also stated its intention to move to the third stage by incurring a further four million dollars in expenditure. So, so as this moves along, of course, uh, King Rose's stake increases. Um, but then again, the value of the asset increases too, and of course, that's uh, that's the stake uh, also, or, or, or the the, um, the the other stake which is held by uh, by Metals One. So, all of this is moving along, and indeed, this was recognised by um, uh, by uh, Edison Group, who initiated coverage uh, in September uh, on Metals One. Um, and uh, you know that they, they they entitled it first by name, first by nature. Uh, the uh, and uh, the company said um, 
with net assets of 8.8 .8 million, we calculate that Metals One had a book value per share of 4.24p as at the end of uh, for the year 2023, um, at which the shares are currently trading at a significant 80.3% discount. Um, and th this is not an uncommon story, as we know, Mark. Of course, we, we speak about uh, many mining and resource companies, but the fact that uh, this is so dramatically undervalued um, and throughout the year, uh, certainly throughout this year, the project has been de-risked and de-risked and de-risked. Uh, in, in fact, it's been de-risked on, uh, on on both assets because, of course, with King Rose now completing the drilling work at Rana, that project's also been de-risked too. But not only has the Black just been de-risked, uh, the mineral resource estimate has been upgraded. So the uh, the Jork estimate is now 29, 29 million tonnes. The... Uh, the total project reserves are 57 million tons, more than double the previous uh, the the the, uh, the previous mineral resource estimates um, overall. Um, and uh, Edison have said that um, uh, Met One are undervalued by almost any measure. Uh, and again, I think you know net assets of 8.8 .8 million, the book value of 4.25 GP tell you, tells you what you need to know. But here we are. We're sitting at this point at the moment. We're awaiting the US election. We're awaiting the UK budget. So, um, so uh, we've all spoken about, uh, and I think there's a lot of belief in the market that once these are passed, then there'll be more of a risk-off approach to the market. So companies like Net One should uh, benefit from from that uh, immediately. So uh, Wardell Armstrong uh, working on the Black Shift project. Um, that work will be completed by the end of next month. Uh, so we'll have a very uh, clear picture on that ahead of the, of course, the the, um, the update on the critical minerals uh, uh, um, uh, or critical mineral supply by the EU in early January. Also worth noting as well that um, uh, this month uh, Metals One announced the reassay that they had reassayed some of the Paltama P1 core, which uh, of course identified high grade nickel, uh, copper cobalt and zinc intersections uh, which Jonathan Owen said of course this uh, this also underlines the quality of the project pipeline um, and you know that process of de-risk de-risk all the way through um, has yet to be reflected in the share price as indicated by Edison but I think uh, I think this is one company that um, once these macro uh, issues are out of the way i.e US election i.e UK budget then we should see uh, met one start to redress that valuation gap yeah indeed well as i said at the start alan it's, it's a, all on track for the end of the year so that's when we really get that first proper good economic look at uh, what the project could offer and it is a pea not a scoping study they are very similar yes but you're right it's the yes. pea the preliminary yep. economic, economic assessment, assessment. assessment which is yep. always a, a, a tongue twister to try and say <laughs> when you are uh, recording an interview uh but yes that's a, a fantastic place to be at because it gives you that first look and it really does as you say they, they've de-risked it at numerous points along the way and this will further de-risk it considerably um so yes yeah, it's it's, uh, it's looking good at, at metals one uh jonathan owen really making a yeah taking everything through those stage gates as he said they've not been listed that long really um and what they've got is uh it's already you know pretty well pretty well advanced it's not like they're stabbing in the dark you know drilling sort of you know in the middle of nowhere trying to make a discovery they, they, they've, they've sort of got it they're moving down that pea route so yeah good time to be looking at metals one i think um I, I, for some for some reason i don't know why but certainly the metals one shorts that uh, go out on stockbox get a lot of hits whether it's because it's finland whether it's because it's europe i'm not sure or yeah homegrown but um there's definitely a lot of uh eyes that seem to 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 like and reshare those uh, those clips so i do find that quite interesting so um great restriction um great commodities good good time to be in so yeah i think it's definitely worth a look as you as you've laid out there so thank you alan for for going through with that and i'm sure we'll catch up on uh, metals one before the year's end and we can have a look at that pea maybe we have to do a christmas special on the pea from uh, metals one but um yeah we can certainly look forward to that uh, right. So, what do you want to take next, Alan? Uh, well, let's 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 uh, go with Beek's uh, financial cloud Beaks, group, BKS. Okay. Yeah. Looking so, forward so to this. First time yeah, we've spoken is, about it. it. It is indeed. Yeah, it, it, it's a very interesting company. It was pointed out to me by someone else, but um, um, I like the fact that the chief executive Gordon MacArthur 
who set the company up in 2011, still holds 32% of the shares in the company. And this is with the market capitalization of 158 million. So um, it's had a really, really strong year. If you look at the share price action over the past year, the shares were trading a year ago at 107p, currently trading at 237p, and they've been as high as uh, 290p, just under 300 pence on the year. Really strong performance from the group. So BKS, so Beaks Financial, are AIM listed, recognized as a leader in the financial technology landscape or fintech landscape. And they provide infrastructure as a service to exchanges around the world um, in that they, uh, they, they, their initial work is involves building, maintaining and analyzing the digital infrastructure that allows financial transactions to occur at very, very high speed. Um, and because they have this infrastructure in place, they have this cloud infrastructure, they are trusted by the world's largest financial exchanges. And indeed, they have 22 data centers uh, around the world, 200 uh, uh, PTP uh, connections, uh, cross connects, and over a thousand uh, enterprise uh, financial clients. And of course, uh, with all that, they provide uh, 24 seven network support uh, via data centers based in London, New York, Paris, Chicago, Singapore, Frankfurt, Sydney, and uh, and Hong Kong, um, and it's just been a story of of steady growth. Um, and as with any, I mean, we've spoken, of course, about other companies that offer services to uh, to to large bodies such as governments, health services, and so on. Of course, it takes a long time to get into and to win contracts within those organizations but once you're in you become part of that infrastructure and it's very hard to then change that and so it is with uh, with bks speaks cloud the financial cloud group um, and indeed uh, we've just had a fantastic set of full year results from the company which which i'll go through uh, in a second but um but the company has announced sort of over over the year um that, uh, that it's uh, they had a new they they have a new partnership with securities trading technology a strategic partnership set to reshape the future of exchange trading and, and clearing. Um, uh, the the company also announced in, in August that following a, an announcement uh, at um, in February this year um, where they announced a multi million dollar multi year expansion contract for its proximity cloud offering with a major global stock exchange uh, provider, that cloud exchange uh, uh, um, infrastructure was approved by the regulator and is now in use with uh, with one of the most renowned global exchanges in the world. Uh, the company also extended a contract with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and indeed uh, this month announced its full year results where uh, it grew its revenue over the past year to, by 27% to 28.5 million um, and as often uh, uh, takes place with these sort of contracts, um, they the, the company reports annualized monthly recurring revenues, and and this is of course uh, this is of course a key metric and a, a key performance indicator for the company. That grew by eighteen percent to twenty eight million, uh, gross profit up twenty four percent to eleven half million, underlying EBITDA up twenty seven percent to just under eleven million, and a near doubling of un, um, uh, underlying diluted earnings per share to 6.36p from 3.9p previously, ending the year with net cash of 6.6 uh, 6, uh, million uh, compared to 4.4 million last year. So this is a company that is embedded with major global exchanges, has no debt, has net cash of 6.6 6 million, and is through its reputation and through the work it's already doing, winning uh, contracts with uh, exchanges um, around the world. And on the outlook for the year, with that full year sales announcement came uh, an update, uh, a very strong update. Um, the company re uh, noted material growth in the sales pipeline, um, uh, that it was seeing multiple opportunities to scale uh, its exchange cloud business, which of course it's just won that huge contract with. And it's a very confident, quote unquote, of achieving 2025 uh, um, uh, for, uh, the, the 2025 financial outcome. 
So this is a, it's a niche company. It operates in an area that uh, if you're in the markets, you, you'll understand. Um, but it is a cornerstone player and it's, uh, it's, it's in a really important position. And, you know, the very fact that the, that the founder um, and chief executive, Gordon MacArthur, who set the company up, still holds 32% of the shares, tells you all you, all you need to know. So I would imagine at some point we're going to see, um, we're going to see a, 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 a dividend and paid. And of course, then, you know, at that point, it becomes even more attractive, offering capital growth and dividend payments uh, to boot. Is that, yeah, is that what the sort of game plan is then to start doing dividend payments? I mean, obviously a very profitable company, 11.5 million profits on the year. Yeah, I, I mean, at the moment, the company is in growth phase, but uh, but with mm. this sort of company generating this sort of cash, um, uh, I, I imagine they'll come under pressure from uh, the major shareholders to receive a dividend back, which I think is perfectly reasonable, you know. So so mm -hmm. so I, I I think I think it's not unreasonable to expect that, and of course, you know, it'll be great when that happens for 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 shareholders. So yeah. Yeah, indeed. Okay, interesting. Yeah, well, a good little maybe tech play there, and it's 157. So you know, it's an established um, company, isn't it? The market cap there, 157. So um, yeah, uh, got some good contracts there, as you say, with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Is there plans just to really sort of continue on the same path and and you know, renew clients, but also get in, you know, as they're in with the J JSE now, sort of you know, follow in with other exchanges, perhaps as a as a yeah yeah first well. Port of call. The uh, I mean, a, a, a lot of the exchanges uh, won't uh, or, or don't want uh, their the, the fact that uh, uh, Beaks have won contracts with them. They, they don't want that to be announced, so they don't want uh, the, the world to know. But of course, it will get out at some point. Some exchanges are happy to know, but uh, happy for the uh, for, for the markets to know. But but no, I, I mean, in this case, uh, the fact the the announcement was with uh, one of the world's most globally recognised exchanges, so you, you could probably sort of look at it and say, well, it's probably a New York Stock Exchange or something like something mm. of of that size, uh, which which is huge, you know. And um, I, I, as I made the point, you know, the uh, to get in or to 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 uh, become embedded into that sort of infrastructure um, doesn't happen overnight, you know. That's a long and protracted process mm. and uh you know the fact is now that big are trusted to provide the infrastructure trusted that they have the expertise and the knowledge and the understanding of the markets and uh, uh you know it's it's uh it, it's it's a really exciting uh company that is very much in, in, in growth mode and we've seen strong growth this year but um by the looks of it certainly the outlook statement from the group indicates that there's an awful lot more to come okay good well thank you alan for introducing that company to us, that's Beaks Financial Cloud Services. Beaks is the, the ticker, is that right? Uh, a BKS is the ticker. BKS, yeah. okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, good. So we'll finish off then with facilities by ADF. I know we've spoken about them before. It's in the sort of film and TV industry, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, uh, and uh, they had a, had a torrid time uh, last year. Uh, obviously, there was the writer strike in Hollywood, and, and mm. that really, it really... Uh, uh, did create a, a, a huge amount of disruption for the industry and of course a big interruption in terms of, of revenue earned because you've got all these ancillary companies whenever a film or a TV series is made you've got all these ancillary companies that have set up infrastructures to support the films because they know there's a, a film being made here a TV miniseries here a Netflix series over there and of course when that stops which it effectively did it, that leaves a huge hole um, so facilities by ADF, they, uh, they're aim listed. Um, the shares are currently trading at uh, 15.5p. Um, they have been as high as 60p on the year as low as 45p. So very much in the middle of in the middle of the year's trading range at the moment. And they're a provider of production facilities and support vehicles to TV and film, and of course all across Hollywood. And that, that of course means that when you go to a film set, you've got all these different vehicles, you know, makeup vehicles, production, uh, administrative offices, artist trailers, um, toilets, or what are known as honey wagons in the industry, uh, generators, uh, um, dining vehicles and technology vehicles, uh, you know, every single piece of piece of kit. And, and the company um, uh, has been has been set up to uh, or, or the, the company is aiming to build uh, a, a business that will will be turning over um, uh, um, uh, uh, a hundred million or so um, in, 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 in a few years down the road, and what it's going to be doing to achieve that, it's going to be a, 
um, acquiring businesses in the sector that are complementary to its overall uh, uh, its overall sort of range and, and offering, and and indeed it did so in August where um, it uh, it initiated a placing and retail offer to raise ten and a half million um, to uh, to acquire Autotrack, which is a portable roadway, and um, Autotrack was the largest privately owned supplier of panels to the film, TV, festivals and outdoor events businesses in the UK. Um, the company itself generated 8.5 million uh, uh, last year to December 31st and EBITDA of 4.5 million. Um, and uh, it was, it, it was uh, um, the team at ADF stated, it was very much the next step in its vision of delivering a one-stop shop to, uh, solution to film and TV production. Um, this was very well supported. Uh, two institutions invested seven point six million in that placing. So clearly, they share the vision that ADF of a well on well on route to uh, achieve this. Um, and certainly, um, the the company announced uh, a strong set of interims in September. And despite, of course, the the uh, the company being hit by this Hollywood writers' strike uh, in in the second half. Um, it's working with such series as The Crown, uh, Slow Horses, Star Wars Andor, The Gentleman, Rivals, The Diplomats, um, and and a lot of other titles. Um, a very strong um, uh, first half, uh, 15.2 million, um, which of course was down on the first half last year, pre-strike, but 17% up on uh, the second half of last year. So again, showing strong recovery post the post the writer's strike. Um, EBITDA again recovering strongly, up 62% on the second half last year. Um, and uh, the company said at that point that the, the, the end of that first half uh, finished very strongly and they were seeing a really strong, uh, strong order book that was continuing to build in, uh, in the second half. And on the back of that, they're confident in the full year outcome and, of course, of making further acquisitions further down the road. So despite the right to strike, it's business as usual. The company is growing rapidly. It's now it will now be embedding that uh, revenue that's generated by auto track into its revenues overall. So I think, you know, next year we're really, really going to see this company start to blaze a trail and and build its business. But um, it, it's a good industry to buy in uh, or, or to be in. And I think, um, you know, as most of us now, you know, have access to all of the different streaming channels like Netflix, Amazon and uh, Apple TV and so on. It's uh, the, the opportunities uh, for companies to provide services to this burgeoning film industry have never been better. Mm, good stuff, good stuff. And for, since last time we spoke about the Mallon, uh, well, I can't remember when that was, but it was possibly, I want to say, you know, I think it was maybe in the summer, so maybe two or three months ago anyway. Any sort of key developments happened in that time that are of note? Uh, well, uh, I think I think we spoke just after the placing, and of course that was in August. So, right, so yeah. that, okay. So, so, so the placing sort of took place to place of fifty p, and we're now basically trading at that same level. So, okay. so that's that's kind of uh, that, that that's sort of encouraging. And, yeah, and it's seeing, encouraging in this market. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in this market, it is encouraging. But I think, but I think again, you know, it's symptomatic of where we are in the in the macro cycle right now. We're we're waiting for these macro events to. To give us some certainty in terms of outlook and um, and facilities mm. by ADF in that regard are no different really to Metals One or or Bigs Financial, but uh, but of course it, you know there are some niche industries that will continue to grow unabated and unaffected by the the macro mm. picture. But certainly certainly you know film production is it, it's a relatively uh, a well cushioned industry, I, I I'd argue, but certainly certainly you know if you get something out of the blue like a writer strike, it it actually really hit the industry hard, and certainly uh, the facilities by ADF numbers for the second half of last year were very down uh, compared to previously, and and very much against the growth trend. But I think now that's starting to pick up again. Of course, there's probably. Uh, an element of pent up demand too. That uh, you know, stuff that was scheduled is now being rescheduled, and of course, uh, you know, if you've got the resources to suddenly cope with a load more work, then then uh, then, then you'll benefit. And uh, I think we're going to see that with uh, facilities. You know, as we as we go forward toward the end of this year, 
and also uh, you know look very closely for the next trading statement because I think the next trading statement is going to tell you that, or, or tell us everything we need uh, we need to know about how strong that recovery uh, really is. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Alan, for your time again, as always. Do have a pleasant weekend and let's catch up in a week's time. Thank you, Mark, and you too. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programmes at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching. Oh,